What does it mean to address a human, an animal, a tree or a plant as comrade? For the Court for Intergenerational Climate Crimes, comradeship is a recognition of the relation between those on the same side of a struggle, a relation that is shaped by common work, common dependencies and common care. When a river brings life-sustaining water to people, plants and animals, is the river not working with all humans and non-humans in comradely ways? When a forest gives life-saving medicinal plants, when it provides home to the snake and the mongoose alike and holds back rainwater from flooding, does the forest not work with all in comradely ways? To harm Comrade River, then, or Comrade Forest, means to harm the livelihood of all comrades, humans, animals, plants, fungi, protists, and monorans that live in interdependency with that river or forest or with each other living by that river or forest. Not only those that exist in the present are harmed, but the unborn comrades of the future that are violently forced to live without river or forest. Comradeship is not given. Comradeship is a possibility that manifests through shared struggles by recognizing one another as fellow ecosystem workers. To use the noun comrade affirms a fundamental reality of collectivity interdependency and intergenerationality. It affirms that across space and time, we must stand on the same side of the existential struggle between the death form of racial ecocidal capitalism and the living worlds needed for meaningful common survival. Comradeship is an affirmation of collective life in the face of extinction. What's wrong with rights? At least since the European Renaissance and the Reformation, European merchants, a section of the aristocracy and intellectuals, rallied together to bring about a social and intellectual revolution. They changed the concept of rights from an idea in moral philosophy in ancient Europe to a mercantile idea based on property and contracts. This new regime of rights was essential in the colonial period to turn land and living beings into commodities. This caused the first wave of mass extinctions the extinctions of animal and plant life and of the human languages and cultures that thrived with them. Here, the death form of racial ecocidal capitalism manifests as the propagation of racial superiority legitimized as the right to dispossess living worlds. The proprietary idea of rights is necessary to enter into contracts. It has become so entrenched in our psyche and our modes of being in the world that we can no longer imagine a world without this foundation. From water, forests and land, from mineral to fossil memory, from labor to care and love, the proprietary conception of the world rules supreme. It does not matter whether rights-bearing parties appear in the form of the state or private individuals or corporations or NGOs or even rivers and mountains. Modern rights have transformed the merchant's worldview into the human worldview, a merchant's destiny into life's destiny. A rights-bearing river means that the law and not the river will decide how much water humans, birds, trees and mangroves must get. The relationship 
between the river and the lives that depend on it are no longer negotiated amongst themselves on the basis of interdependent needs but instead are mediated by law and contractual obligations the court for intergenerational climate crimes recognizes nature as a relation that connects us to human and non-human ancestors of the past to comrades in the present and to future descendants it is those interdependent and intergenerational relationships that bind us together in our common struggle for a biosphere for all we insist that land water forest can never be private property we demand a new paradigm of climate justice that dismantles the idea of rights from property and contracts and anchors it instead to interdependent and intergenerational relationships between all living beings we put the law on trial we charge the law for establishing corporations and states we charge the law for creating legal personhood for corporations and treating legal persons as if they were living beings we charge the law for fraudulently claiming that transnational corporations like airbus ing and unilever are persons comparable to human beings we charge the law with permitting and encouraging murder of non-human life by limiting the crime of murder to human species alone we charge the law with deceitful conduct by endowing transnational corporations with human rights including rights to free speech and conscience we charge the law with forcibly dismembering nature from people we charge the law for fraudulently representing ecosystems as property and people as labor force and for allowing both to be bought and sold in markets around the world we charge the law for establishing a social order founded on legal entities that can only survive by perpetually extracting life from the living worlds of peoples cultures rivers mountains forests seas animals plants minerals fossils we charge the law for the massacre of pasts presents and deep futures by enabling the legalization of intergenerational climate crimes perpetuated by transnational corporations and states we charge the law for co-constituting the death form of racial ecocidal capitalism This is the court for intergenerational climate crimes. This is the court where pasts, presents and futures assemble. This is the court of human and non-human and other than human comradeship. Outside the court, non-human comrades are declared extinct plants and animals. Inside this court, they assemble as martyrs of the crimes perpetuated by states and transnational corporations they are our ancestors who sit by our sides comrades with whom we hold hands pause leaves as we charge the corporations and states responsible for the destruction of their worlds and ours fossils are present amongst us for millions of years our ancestors animals and plants lay buried in the recesses of time until modern states and corporations violently excavated and extracted them to burn our futures this violence leaves generations of animals plants fungi protists and monorans 
without resting sites and without life-sustaining inheritances from their ancestors. Humans too assemble at the court. They gather to testify against corporations and states, against ecocidal and racialized crimes committed over multiple generations, against the death form of racial ecocidal capitalism. The humans join their comrades as judges, prosecutors, witnesses and jury to deliver justice to corporations and states for their intergenerational climate crimes, for numerous extinction wars against all species and against time itself. We future ancestors, we accuse, we bring evidence of what has been done and what is to be done. For that is the burning question of our movement in a burning world. We testify to violated pasts, presents and futures and we testify to defiant pasts, presents and futures. We bring evidence of dying worlds and of possible worlds. We testify not only to the violence that has been done to us, we bring evidence of the living worlds, the life forms, the forms of life that could be, that must be, that were and will be. In the presence of all human and non-human comrades, gathered at the court for intergenerational climate crimes, we proclaim living worlds, interdependent rights, intergenerational solidarity. We proclaim that regeneration of all life forms is the first principle of a law that constitutes shared comradely ecosystems and must be respected unconditionally to ensure deep futures for all, intergenerational, interdependent, regenerational.